Hey, this video is to instruct how to add error bars that are specific to each value. These are called customizable error bars on a graph in Excel. So I'm going to start by looking at this data that I've got. And it looks like I was changing the pH and trying to measure the change in temperature. So I want to first by I want to first show that the temperature is corresponding to all of these values. So I'm going to merge and center that instruction right there. Temperature, or that label right there. So temperature goes with trial 1, trial 2, trial 3, and my averages. I suppose I can include my uncertainties under that. I'm not sure. It doesn't much matter. So I'm going to put, I'm just going to put some boxes around that so it looks pretty. We could do some more later. Maybe not around that one. Let's do it around this one. There we go. All right, so um, what I'd like to do is first I'd like to plot this, but I don't want to plot all my data. I want to plot my averages. So first I'm going to make the computer do the work for me and calculate my averages. So I'm going to start by clicking the equals button, which tells Excel that I'm ready to format an equation. And now I'm going to start typing the word average. And as soon as I even get into AV, it pops up with all these different function options. I want the basic average and now it says okay you're telling me to do the function average but you have to tell me which numbers you want so I'm gonna highlight the cells of the numbers that I want so I click C3, C, D3 and E3 and hold as I drag my finger so now it's coded C3 through E3 if you don't want to do this physically with your finger like I did. Oh, and I, now I need to close parentheses and hit enter. Another way to do it, I'll start it again, is I could just type in the cells. So I'm, I'm at C4 and I can hit colon. I want it to go over to E4. And do you see how it highlighted that for me? I didn't actually do it. Close parentheses, there. Finally, I can just go to this bottom right cursor where do you see how my cursor right now is white if I go to the bottom right of this cell where that dot is it turns it into a black cursor that is the copy cursor so I'm going to click that and drag it down that means copying that same function into all those cells great now you can see that it has all these extra numbers I don't want all those numbers so I'm going to go up here to the minimize the decrease decimal button and click that until it looks like a reasonable number of decimals. You could go there or there depending on which value we recorded. It looks like I only recorded to the ones place so I can only report an average to the ones place. Enter. Done. Great. My border went away. I'll have to reborder it. That's okay. Now. I'm ready to highlight the things that I want to graph. So I'm going to highlight pH. If I click over here and include the word average, it's going to place average as my dependent variable name. I don't want it to do that, so I'm only going to highlight my numbers so that I can type in what I want it to code the name as. So how I did that was I highlighted the first row and then I hold command with my left hand and use my right finger to drag down the second column of information. Insert, scatter plot, there we go. Hey, that looks pretty good. Let's add some labels primary horizontal, primary vertical. So down here I've got, I double click on it, and I'm going to change it to pH. This one I'm going to double click on and change it to temperature in degrees Celsius. Close. Did it do it? Great. Okay, that's good enough for now. All right, we're ready for a trend line. So I go up to chart design. I say add chart element, trend line. It looks pretty linear to me. Great. I want that trend line to give me an equation, so I double click on it. This box pops up. I click display equation on chart. Great, there's my equation. Unfortunately, I cannot report out to the ten thousandths, so I need to minimize it to the um, 
number of sig figs that I recorded. All of these have about two sig figs, so I'm going to write it to 1.3. Same with this one, 49. Great. Oops. Great. I've got my equation. I could put a title. Effect of pH on the temperature. I don't know what this was of. That's a terrible title. We'll go with it for now. And I spelled effect wrong, like a noob. But what you're really here for are the trend line or the error bars. So now we need to calculate uncertainty. Well, my uncertainty depends on which function I use. So uncertainty calculations for adding and subtracting has one rule. Uncertainty calculations for multiplying and dividing has another rule. And uncertainty for averages has a third rule. We're going to do the average one. So I'm going to start by looking at my values that I uh, in uh, all my trials. So I'm going to start by taking my highest value, 54, and looking at it compared to my smallest value and finding the difference. So I'm going to tell this cell to do that for me. So I start writing equals. I'm going to open parentheses, and I'm going to go over here and click on my highest value, which was 54, minus my lowest value. So I've either got 48 or 42. I'm going to click on 42, close parentheses, and then I'm going to divide that by 2. Enter. Okay, so that value was 6. Let's do it again down here. Equals, let's see, this was my, oh, I need parentheses, open parentheses, highest value minus lowest value divided by 2, 4.5. Equals, open parentheses, highest value minus lowest value divided by 2, enter. Fortunately, I cannot use the copy cursor for this one because it's not the same column that always has the highest and lowest values. So I have to type this one in manually. But, oops, we need open parenthesis 40 minus, click this one. Oops, that's not my lowest, this is. And sure, I could do this by hand, but I just want to show you what it, how Excel can do it for me. 35 minus, click on this one, 30, divide by 2. Okay, now it did give me some uncertainty values that have two decimals. The rules for uncertainty is that you can only have one sig fig. So I'm going to minimize them all to one sig fig with the decrease decimal button. And now we're ready to go. Let's go back to our data. When I click on the graph, I should get my chart design option up top. I want to say add chart element, and I want to add error bars. Now, I don't want standard, I don't want percentage, I don't want standard deviation, I want options. So I click there. Now error amount is default set to fixed value. Instead of that, I want custom. So I click custom and I say specify value. So the positive error is going to be, I'm gonna, do you see what I did? So positive, I'm saying up this much and down this much. So I click on the go to chart and then I'm gonna highlight all of these values. Hit enter. I'm saying up that much, so plus 6, plus 5, plus 4, plus 3, and minus plus 6, plus 4, plus 4, plus 3. I hit OK. So it's the same thing. I'm highlighting them the same exact column. Great. And now if I make this big, you can see I've got both a vertical and a horizontal. I don't care about a horizontal, I just want vertical. And that is perfect. It shows that my first trial had the highest uncertainty with a plus or minus value of six. And then my bottom two trials had the lowest uncertainty of plus or minus three. And we're good to go.